That took longer than I was expecting. Thank you for your patience, everybody. Here we are, we've done it. We are in a very brand new stream. Um, I, I hope you guys feel there's something special here, that there's something new, something different, um, because this is it. This is our, um, ostensibly it's a learning stream. So, hi, hey, what's up, Mike? What's up, Allison? What's up, Angel Link? How's everybody doing? How y'all doing tonight? What's up? Um, so, oh my gosh, Dawn is here too? Yo, what's up? I was just, I caught your stream earlier. Um, wow, okay, so everyone's here, man. We're having a good time. Maya's here? Oh my gosh, this is incredible. This is so good. It's so, I'm so happy to see you guys here. So, um, why don't I just go ahead and talk a little bit about what it is we're doing here, right? Because this is the first time I've done this stream, as you can see. We have a new setup. We have a new setup, which to our longtime watchers may actually, at least in terms of layout, seem very familiar. It may seem very similar to my DS layout. Um, it's Minecraft Monday. It is, but a different type of craft. That's right. Um, a, a real physical craft, right? So this was kind of my thinking behind um, doing this stream, right? Oh, I think, uh-oh, I think we're a little loud. Okay, that'll do. Um, my thing behind doing this stream is that I have been doing uh, speedrunning streams for a few months now, right? And I was always hesitant to get into the world of speedrunning because it just seems so impenetrable to me, you know? Like, it seemed like something I could never do. And I'm still not good at it, but I still at least do it, you know? I've submitted some runs, I've done it, and that's just because I've had a time to do it, you know, every week for hours at a time. And I figured, why couldn't I extend that same sort of persistent teaching to an actual usable skill, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, Maddie, by the way, hello. I hope you're having a good night. But you're right, it does take time. And learning anything takes time. And I'm very satisfied with the progress I've made in speedrunning, right? Uh, can't imagine, yeah. Um, I'm very satisfied with the pro progress I've made in uh, speedrunning, and I figured, what if I could apply that to a usable skill? So, you know, every other week, twice a month, whatever, I want to try doing a stream where I learn something usable, something physical, something with my hands. And I wanted to start with sewing because I actually got this sewing machine. You might be able to see it's covered in a thin layer of dust, actually. It's kind of embarrassing. Um, I got this sewing machine like back in 2018, right? Because it was something I was interested in learning. I wanted to learn how to use a sewing machine. I have never really done it. My mom was good at sewing, but... You know, it's not a skill she passed along to me. She didn't even really pass it along to my sisters, to be honest. But, um, I figured, hey, I have this thing. It's literally collecting dust. Um, I figure, why not put it to use? So, what I have on me today is I have a Singer Simple sewing machine in this very cute blue color that I got from Joanne's Fabric. Um, all this stuff I got back in 2018, by the way, and just never used. I have, um, both of these I got on, like, clearance or whatever. This, I think, is just, like, a normal cotton fabric? It's got a cool... Oh, my camera cut out. It does that sometimes, just bear with me. Um, I've got, like, I, I don't know what it is. It's got this pattern. I don't know what you call this pattern, but gifts from your past self. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know. It's just, it, it was cheap fabric that I was able to get on clearance. And then I have this, which is like, it's kind of like a stretchy, like spandex material. It was also on clearance and I'm not sure what I would use it for, but I did get quite a bit of it. So I have this as well. Paisley, that's what they call it. Yeah, right? Here, hold on. You'll see in the bottom corner, I have a little browser, right? And we'll be using that to watch videos. Oh, uh, you know what? I don't think it's quite Paisley, right? Paisley is like this shit, you know? I don't know, what do you think? This is more like a flower pattern, I feel like. Getting mixed up with all my cameras. Um, 
I don't know. It's whatever that pattern is, I guess. Um, you're right, though. It does look similar to Paisley. I've got these two threads. Blue and white, right? Um, all purpose. 100% uh, polyester. I don't know what any of this stuff means. I don't know what any of this stuff means. That's the whole point of doing this. Um, I checked my sewing bag and I had a bunch of hair ties. I don't know why I have hair ties. I'm pretty sure there isn't any part of sewing that involves hair ties. I wanted to make a drawstring bag, so maybe it's a component in that. But I'm not sure. So I have those. Sewing shears. Scissors just for sewing. I have these two, so that's great. And then I have a pencil and Sharpie. And I also have Christmas time wrapping paper which from what I understand, you can use wrapping paper to make patterns. So I don't know if we'll be making any patterns tonight, but I have a paper for it. You could see it's kind of been smushed from the drawers it's been in. It's like an oblong spheroid now or whatever. It's an egg shape. Um, and then finally, I have some pins in this nice little plastic container that, as you can see, has never been opened because I really did just <laughs> sit on these things forever. Um, but yeah, I figure, yes, the scissors are just for fabric, not anything else. Um, that is actually something I did learn. So part of this, this uh, journey, if you will, um, started, like I said, back in 2018 when I got the sewing machine, because, um, a friend of mine, um, from like back in high school, uh, she's pretty good at sewing. And I think at the time she was like tweeting about it or posting it on Facebook or something. And that's kind of what like planted the seed in my mind where I'm like, I wanna do this. And also I want an excuse to talk to my friend I haven't talked to in years. Um, so I messaged her and I was like, hey, do you have any tips for how to get started with sewing? And she basically said, um, just do it. You know, like anything, just do it. Watch some YouTube videos and uh, figure it out. So, yeah, that's what we're working with today. I am hoping this is the right material and that it is enough material to get started. It'll be a bit of a bummer if partway through this we learn that um, I'm missing something critical or whatever. So the plan for tonight, which we'll see how it goes because I am starting like a full ass hour late, which isn't ideal, but whatever. <laughs> um, our plan for tonight is to get this thing at least in a state where I can sew one piece of fabric to another piece of fabric. I understand that is not an ambitious goal, but I'm a simple person. If I can get the thread going through this bad boy, and if I can get it onto a piece of fabric, that's a win, baby. That's, we'll consider that a win. But if we've got time to spare, um, I'll try and make a pillow. I think, hold on, I think I have... Hold on, you guys. Hold on, I have more. I have more, okay? I'm gonna, hold on. Hold on, I have more. Right, okay. I also have stuffing. Pill, I don't know what they call it. Fiberfill? They call it fiberfill, I guess. Um, this stuff, I, this is way too much, I feel like, for the size pill I would make. But, um, we'll see if I can do something like that. Stream one, setting up the sewing machine. Yes, um, it is very possible, it, dare I say likely, that the bulk of the stream will just be me watching the um, the sort of singer setup video <laughs> and you guys can watch with me. Um, but, uh, you know, that's kind of an important part of the process, right? Is you have to start with the basics. I don't, look, look at all this shit. It's got, this moves back and forth. There's like three dials on it. I think this is the power button. Oh, it has a little light. That's sick. I think it has a lever somewhere. I don't know what that is. Um, oh yeah, here's the lever. I love it. See, it makes the little, it makes the little foot go up and down. See? It's sick, that's awesome. Sewing machines rock. Oh shit. I actually found this, found this out while I was setting up, right? It has a secret little snack compartment, right? That you can just put stuff in and look. There's already thread in here. I don't know if I put that in there. Because I did try to set this up once and I... Oh shit, you know what that was? Wait, I did do this. Look, I think they call this a bobbin? I wound that. 
We might be able to skip the bobbin winding stuff then. I don't know. Shit, I got more. Yeah, there's more bobbins. There's uh, what looks like an Allen wrench, I guess. But a pointy one, and it's bent twice. Um, yeah. Okay, so there's little little se secret snacks and tricks in here, right? And we'll see what these do as well. What is this? Oh, is this like a, is this like a splicer? Like a splicer? I don't know. Um, <laughs> you can also ask me questions if you need help. I use a brother sewing machine though. Okay. All right, got it. And Allison says bobbins are very important. Okay. I'll be sure to treat my bobbin with the respect that it deserves for sure. Um, so yeah, that'll be the main objective for tonight's stream. Like I said, when you're learning a new thing, you gotta start small, right? And you gotta take the wins where you can get them. So we're gonna start out very simple, very slow. And if you don't know the first thing about sewing, that's fine, because neither do I. And we're gonna learn all of this together. And I think that's gonna be the really fun part about this. Um, <laughs> this probably has nothing to do with sewing machines, but oh, interesting, interesting. Um, Allison says she had a sewing class in middle school and it's coming back to me suddenly. Um, oh, it reminds you you've been wanting to make your own studded belt. No, that relates, right? Because that's related to, um, like, DIY and stuff. That's, that's like the whole, the same whole universe. So, yeah, that's awesome. Studded belts are up. So, um, also just one other thing that I feel like, um, is kind of going to be part of this stream, right? Another, uh, sort of side objective, right? A, a side quest, if you will, is, um, I kind of just want to get my layout set up for this, right? All this... All of this business here, the whole stream layout, I want to get this, oh, there we go, got it. I want to get this, this whole situation looking good, right? Because um, I've only ever streamed video games and this is like a physical thing in meat space, right? So like, I don't know, if you have any suggestions for how to configure everything, let me know. I figure, I went with the dual camera approach here, right? So you can see me and you can see what I'm working on. And I have a little browser right down there, right down, there. There. yeah, yeah, right there, right there, I guess is where, is where it is, um, so yeah, let me know if you have any suggestions for the, uh, the setup here, or anything about the audio, if I'm too quiet, too loud, if the music's too quiet or too loud, just let me know, um, all right, so we better, better just get, better just get right into it, right, so here, let's go ahead and I've brought up this video here, which it doesn't seem like it. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So, yeah, this is the um, the Singer Simple 3232 Sewing Machine Owner's Class Play All. Oh, it's a class. Okay. Now, I hope that is the sewing machine that I have. The 3232. Let's see. I do. I have a Singer 3232G. Yeah, that's what it says. Okay. All right, so this must be the right video. It's the video I watched back in 2018 when I like tried to do this. Um, so, so yeah, this is what we're gonna be working on. Uh, I'll go ahead and cut my music, I guess, because their video is gonna have their own music. Class video for the Singer Simple 3232 sewing yeah. machine. In this video, we're going to go over what you need to know to get started, such as winding a bobbin, threading the needle selecting a stitch, changing the needle, and more. Let's start by taking a tour of the machine. All right. Yeah, let's take a tour of the machine. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is plug in the machine. Yes, okay, I've done that. See? And we're, turn it on. We're definitely plugged in. And you'll know the machine is on when the light comes on. Yeah, and we got the light. On the side, we have the hand wheel. Okay. Hand wheel. On the top, we have the bobbin winding stopper okay. and bobbin winding spindle. Yeah. The carry handle. Yep, that's how I got it here. The spool pin where we'll put our thread when wait, we thread the machine. What are you talking? Oh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. Got that right here. The stitch width dial to adjust yes. the width of our stitches. Yes. The tension dial to fine tune the look of our stitches. Wait. I don't have that. The bobbin winding tension disc. Wait, I don't have the tension. A metal threading guide. I'm sure it's fine. 
Another metal guide. Another metal guide. The take-up lever, which will be really important when we thread the machine. Okay, shit. On the front, we have the reverse lever. Reverse. Like the Uno card reverse. The reverse, stitch reverse. Width dial. Stitch width, okay. And the stitch selector dial. Down by our needle, we have the built-in needle threader. The needle. Oh my god, my needle's covered in dust. Foot. And behind the all-purpose foot, we have the presser foot lifter. Yeah. Which raises and okay. lowers our presser foot. When we remove the accessory tray, yeah. we expose the free arm of the machine. Yeah, the accessory tray. And when we open the door, we have accessories inside. <laughs> you can put all kinds in of stuff pouch, in there. We have some essentials like needles, extra bobbins, yes. a spool cap, yes. and some additional presser feet. Bonus as gifts. Well as a buttonhole foot. Oh, is that what that is? A buttonhole foot? Let's take foot? a look at some of those extra presser feet that come with our machine. I thought that was a splicer. In addition to the all-purpose foot that's already on your machine, you get the buttonhole foot yeah. for making buttonholes. Like we just talked about, the buttonhole foot. The button sewing foot for uh, sewing on buttons. I. Oh, yeah, this. And the zipper okay. foot used for inserting zippers into your projects. Wait, no way. Used for piping. I can put zippers in my now shit? Wind a bobbin. That's awesome! I wanna put zippers on something. Fuck yes! Sewing rocks, are you kidding? The first thing we need to do to wind a bobbin is take off the removable storage compartment. Okay, yeah. We already did that. And open the store. Okay, attention. My AirPods did just die, hold on. God damn it. Usually my AirPods give me a little warning before they die, but this time they super did not. All right, hold up. I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. We are back. Um, see, usually, let me see, do we still, have, we still have audio? All right, fantastic. Usually my AirPods give me a little warning before they die, but sometimes they fucking don't and they just die out of nowhere, which is no rules just right when it does happen. By the way, check out my AirPods case. It does look like, a, I've definitely shown this off before, but it looks like a little dog. Looks like a little dog. I, I love this thing, it's so cute. Alrighty, I feel like I was I was really on a roll there. I felt like I had some very powerful energy for a little bit, and let's just keep it going. So we're winding the bobbin. Wait, I already wound the bobbin with the black. Okay, okay, wait, 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 y'all. Why don't I try winding it with the white thread this time, right? Because I already have, here, hold on. I already have the black bobbin black thread, right? So for the sake of our little, little demonstration here, it's been two years for me. I don't remember any of this. We'll do it again, but with the white thread. And I think that should be fine. It's the same thread. It's just like different, different color, I guess. All right, we'll do that. That's a great idea. Okay. All right, let's keep it going. I'm, I'm feeling good about this. I'm feeling optimistic. Pull this little latch and remove the case. Okay. And retrieve your bobbin. Right. Bobbin was not in there, but that's okay. This machine uses class 15 transparent bobbins. If you want to purchase more bobbins for your machine, yeah. make sure you purchase Singer class 15 yeah, transparent bobbins. you gotta buy bobbins. Singer class. To wind our bobbin... This stream is sponsored by Singer, by the way. Thread onto the spool pin. Okay. I have to clarify, this stream is super not sponsored by Singer. <laughs> um... Okay, so wait, I have to spool my thread. Is there an orientation this has to go in? Probably fine. Now it does have like this little plastic. Oh, I guess I could just, I could just pierce it. Yeah, okay. Maybe I should, 
No, I guess I don't really have to peel it off because it does have useful information on it. You know what I mean? So, okay, that's fine. So, I guess I could just go on any ding-dang way. I'll put it on this way. Okay. Yeah, there we go. All right, we got this. And cap it off with a spool cap. Ooh, ooh, the spool cap. I remember the spool cap. All righty. So, it's going to go up here. Bring the thread to metal guide number one. Metal guide and clip number it in. one. And now I'm Wait. going to bring the thread down to number two, the bobbin winding tension discs, and make sure the thread is snug in between those discs. Snug in between. Then Wait. I'm going to bring the thread over. The thread is snug. To bring the thread down to number two, the bobbin winding tension discs, and make sure the thread is snug in between those discs. All right, so she wraps it around. Then I'm going to bring the thread over to number three, which is our bobbin winding spindle. Okay, so, wait, so, oh my God, slow down. Over to so he's going at the speed of light. Discs. I'm still on the tension disc. Then I'm going to bring the thread over to number three, which is our bobbin winding spindle. Okay, okay. The yeah, that is number have three. a designated top or bottom. So make sure you thread the thread in and out the top of the bobbin. Hold on to the thread tail. Wait, did she say it does have a designated top or bottom or it doesn't have a designated top or bottom? Okay, either way, I think we're good. Um, I thought, hold on, am I stupid? I thought this was the bobbin case. What's it doing up there? She better explain herself real quick. Um, okay, okay. And out the top of the bobbin. A bobbin doesn't have a designated top or bottom. Oh, it doesn't have a designated so top sure or bottom. You thread the okay, thread thank you. In and out the top of the bobbin. In and out the top of the bobbin. Hold on to the thread tail. Hold on to the thread tail. Oh! Click the bobbin into place on the bobbin winding spindle. Oh! That, that's awesome! Sure the bobbin is all the way on the spindle so that the thread doesn't accidentally wind around the spindle itself. Yeah. Move the bobbin winding spindle over to the right. Click. Ooh, that's satisfying. Hold on to the thread tail. Hold on to the thread and tail. And press the foot control to begin winding. No, stop. Are we doing it? <gasps> okay, okay, okay. This is this is big, you guys. So we're actually going to push the foot pedal now. Um, okay, I'm like kind of nervous. This is like... Uh, okay, this is like Guitar Hero, right? When you play... Or no, uh, Rock Band, right? When you play the drums, right? And you have the... The, dump, the, dump, the foot pedal, it's like that. Oh shit, it's going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo! <gasps> Are you see? Look at this! We're doing it! You can't, you can't really see it. Let's get real, real close, real close up in the, oh, this is grizzly. Yeah, we're winding our bobbin. We're doing it. Unbelievable. This is so cool. I'm like stoked out of my mind. Okay, 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 okay. All right, let's keep going. Oh, whoopsie daisy. Did not mean to push that hotkey. The bobbin case. And I see. You have enough thread for your she project. has a plan with the bobbin case. All right, we were here. Winding spindle. Over to the right, hold on to the thread tail, and press the foot control to begin winding. Okay, so she really goes for it. Yeah! When the thread tail is buried, clip the tail flush with the top of the bobbin, and continue winding until the bobbin is full or until you have enough thread for your project. Wait, what did she say? Clip the tail. Winding until the bobbin is tail flush with the top of the bobbin. And continue winding until the bobbin is full or until you have enough thread for your project. Oh, real shit? If I clip it at the top, it'll just stay there? Really? I don't believe you. No way! <gasps> That's so cool. Are you kidding? That's sick. Um... I don't know, how much do we send this? Oh my gosh, uh, sorry, I didn't hear the notification, but Tisa Girl, thank you so much for the follow. Thank you for joining. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, friction be weird like that, says Mike. Yeah, I guess you're right. That's pretty much how this is working at this point, right? Is the thread is just staying on the bobbin by its sheer, like, determination, isn't it? Uh, 
what is that? A genome? Um, are you referring to the sewing machine? The sewing machine is a singer. It's a singer simple. That's that's what I'm using. Um, I am not familiar with a genome. Full send the bobbin. Give us bobbin cam. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's so convenient with the snipping of the thread's tail. Bob with the bobbin. Alrighty. You guys want bobbin cam? Let's go. Let's go full bobbin cam. Are you kidding? Let me just really sort of... I could probably even, like, zoom in a little bit on that. Yeah. Yes, bobbin cam. Let's go. Yes. All right, here we go. Full send. Yes! Let's go! Yeah, baby! Look at this bobbin! Look at this bobbin! Look at this bobbin! Okay. All righty. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. Okay. All right. Sorry. Sorry. I got like way too overexcited about my bobbin. Um, <laughs> full send. Let's go. Um, you're referring to was the sewing machine. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. The sewing machine is not a, um, it's, it, it's not a, uh, genome. It is a, uh, it is a singer simple three, six, three, six. Three two two three. Three two two three G. I got it at Michael's. Or no, I got it at Joanne's. Uh back in like 2018. Um also Chandler, hello. I see that you are here now and I love that. Um Yeah, so um yeah, Tisa, I'm like super new to sewing. This is like the first time pretty much that I've ever done it. <laughs> and I'm trying to trying to figure it out, trying to learn. So I think this machine I heard was good for beginners, that it's a very simple and sort of straightforward machine. Um, I think that's why I got it. It was also fairly inexpensive. So right now I'm just following the, um, owner's class. I think they called it basically just like a setup video. So as you can see, I just learned how to wind a bobbin and I'm really excited about it apparently. Um, so yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll keep going with the video. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Look at that bobbin action. My bobbin looks good. It looks when thick. When you're done winding your bobbin, move the bobbin winding spindle back to the left. Okay. Remove the bobbin. Okay. okay. We're removing it. And clip the thread. And we're clipping the thread. Okay. Now we're ready to insert it into the machine. Okay. Now place the bobbin into the bobbin case. That's what she was talking about. And pull the thread to make sure the bobbin is rotating in a clockwise motion. Clockwise, so it has to go the other way. Yes. Place the thread into this groove. And bring the thread under the metal plate. Under the metal plate, okay. You will feel and hear it click into place. Yeah, actually I did. Okay, cool. Now hold yeah. on to this latch on the front of the bobbin case and insert it. <laughs> okay, hold on to the latch and insert it. And you will feel it set into place. Yes, I, I think that's right. I think I did it right. This finger will be pointed up towards the top of the machine. Yeah, it is. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do before threading the top of my machine is raise the presser foot. Wait, hold on. I think mine is I'm in backwards. Is mine in backwards? No. The levers face it. Yeah. Oh, I think did it just click. I think we're, I think we're good. If we're not, I'll redo those that step. I guess. Um, Chandler says it's a cute blue color too. It is a cute blue color too. Tisa says I'm totally new. I'm getting my first machine, which is a Genome JW eighty one hundred, and that is computerized. Really, that's cool. It's only 260. Dang, I think this was like like 120 or something. So like it wasn't like super cheap. 260 is not bad for a computerized one. I uh, Look, catch me again in like a few months if I'm like really into sewing, like maybe I'll get like a sick like hypertech sewing machine. That would be awesome. But all right, I think we've got our bobbin in place now. I think this is right. And if it's not, we can just redo it. That's the cool thing about this. If we mess something up, we can just redo it. So I think as long as you heard the click sound, it should be fine. Okay. I'm just like kind of sketched out because my thread is coming out from the left side and her thread is coming out from the right side. But I think it should be fine. I think it should be fine. We'll keep going with it. Threading the top of my machine 
is raise the presser foot. Raise the presser foot, okay. Next, turn the hand wheel towards you so that the needle is in the highest position. Gosh, oh my gosh, this is so dusty, you guys. This is so dusty. This has been sitting for just like two years, y'all. Oh my God, for like two and a half years, for like three years at this point. I should try to figure out exactly when I got this thing. I bet I could figure it out. I probably have like a photo in my camera roll or something. Okay, all right. So the presser foot's not too, too dusty now. So what did you say? Turn the hand wheel until something? You will also notice that the taco is in the highest position. Oh, until the needle's in the highest you position. You will also notice that the take-up lever is clearly visible. Take-up lever is clearly visible. If you've visible. just wound a bobbin, yes. the top of your machine probably looks like this. It does! Remove the thread from the bobbin winding tension discs. Okay. The thread is already in metal guide number one. It is already in metal guide bring number one. Bring it around one. metal guide number two. Bring it around town. And bring it down number three. Down number three. Do a U-turn at number four. Do a U-turn at number four. And bring it up to the take-up lever. Bring it up to the And go from the right to the left. Right to the left, yep. And bring it back down. Bring it back down. You'll see the thread go into the eye of the take-up lever. I do see that, bring yes. Bring the thread down to number six. And slip yes. it into the guide right above the needle. Slip it into the guide right above the needle. Oh yeah, I this see that. This machine has a built-in needle threader. So bring the thread over to the metal hook and push down on the built-in needle threader. Whoa, well, wait, 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 wait. Maybe your machine has a built-in needle threader. I don't think mine does. I ain't got no built-in needle threader. Where did she manifest that needle threader from? Excuse me? Let me see that one more time. This machine has a built-in needle threader. So bring the thread over to the metal hook and push down on the built-in needle threader so that it encompasses the needle. Bring the thread in between the two prongs and hold on to the thread to give it a bit of tension and release the built-in needle threader. In the back, there will be a little loop. Pull onto that loop and your needle is threaded. That's dope. Are you kidding? So there's one last thing we need to do. Are you kidding? That's the coolest shit I've ever seen. No cap, that's the coolest shit I've ever seen. Automatic needle threader? Are you kidding? Dude, fuck it. Like, I don't even give a shit about, like, computers and video games anymore. I just want a sewing machine with an automatic needle threader. There, there ain't no way mine has an automatic needle threader. No. No, this one does not. All right, here, hold on. I know this is going to take me a minute. Let me throw some music on. Let me throw some music on real quick. Okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, dang. Okay, let's see. Um. I'm just catching up on chat right now. Nick says, I think the machine is mirrored in the video. It very well might be. Um. I think mine is actually mirrored in in my video. In my capture, I believe it's mirrored. Um, I don't know about the one that I'm watching. Um, here, we'll go big mode. Um, Allison says she's never owned one. I think as long as you have clip sound, you should be good. Maybe needed a stream, dust the sewing machine. <laughs> stream zero, dust the sewing machine. Yeah, you know what? Maybe, like I could really break down this process like super far if I want to. Like. Maybe stream negative one, I take you all to Michael's with me and I buy the sewing machine, right? Or negative two, I'm sitting there like, I should message my friend and ask her about stuff. <laughs> you know, like I could really step this back a whole bunch. Um, but I don't know, I might just have to hit this with like a moist uh, cloth or something and I think it'll be good. Ya dusty kid, right? Um, Tissa says, I tried the PFAP machines in sewing store uh, dude, those are sick. Those are like 5,000 and up, but man, too nice. They are amazing when you pedal the presser foot, uh, automatically goes down, and when you unpedal the presser foot, automatically raises for you. That's so cool. Fancy with the needle threader. 5K machine sounds fancy. I bet it threads the needle. <laughs> you gotta thread it yourself like a pleb. Okay, yeah, I, th I think that's exactly it. 
Um, let's see if you do. I'm sure you do. I don't think I do. Gotta get the Game Boy Color enabled sewing machine. Yes, you're right. Um, what is this music? The music I had just a moment ago is from Terraria. Uh, right now, this is just some Jake Chud now. You got good music. Um, my camera is mirrored. Yeah, I think you're right. Let's see. Yeah, it's definitely mirrored. All right, cool. I guess I could unmirror it. I don't know. Let's see. How do we feel about that? Let's just see real quick. Ah, I feel like I don't like this. We'll try unmirrored. I feel like I don't like this. This feels weird to me. Um, really want to learn to sew because it's a really useful skill, but just seeing all this is giving me anxiety. Oh no! Theodore, first of all, welcome. Hello. But don't worry. Okay, so um, I don't know how long you've been with us, but um, it's not it's not as complicated as it looks once you start getting into it. And that's something that I have to learn, right? Because I'm start I'm coming at this from nothing, right? I don't know the first thing about sewing, but when you break it down, you just need the machine. You need some thread. You need some cloth, and that's kind of it. For the most part, that's all you need you need. You probably want some um, fabric scissors, and then you'll probably want some like, some little needles. Not needles. What is this? Pin? This is a pin. I don't even have a pin cushion. He doesn't even have a pin cushion. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's... I'm, I'm trying to just take it slowly, right? I'm trying to take it real slowly. Um, but yeah, so... If you feel anxious about all of the stuff that's involved here, don't worry. We'll go through it together. That's the whole point of this uh, of this stream is learning together. Um, first project: sew a pin cushion. Oh no! How do I sew a pin cushion without pins? Uh, Chandler says I can hand stitch, but it's hard to but it, it's not hard to learn, and it's basically a less complicated version of a sewing machine, but slow. Maybe try that first. Less overwhelming. That's actually really good advice. Yeah, Theodore, if you're feeling kind of stressed out by a whole machine with all these moving parts and stuff, hand stitching is a great place to start. It's just you, some thread, some fabric, ba 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 ba. You just do some stitches. I don't know how hand sewing works. Um, gee, sew a pin cushion to cushion your pins so that you could sew better pin cushions. Yes, it's like a tech tree in a video game, but with sewing. Um, all right, I've been putting off threading this needle here because I know. Like, I'm worried I'm gonna embarrass myself because my eyes are so bad. Well, actually, hold on, first of all. In her video, she threaded it from front to back, right? Right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, she threaded it from front to back. So that's fine. So, <laughs> yeah, just don't stab yourself. I need you guys to know that my eyes are really bad. Yeah, let me see if I can get you all like a macro shot. Yeah. I actually had to lower the resolution of my stream so that it fit the layout better. Oh, oh, I did it. Wait, that wasn't very hard at all. But yeah, we're, I think right now it's capturing at like 720p right now. So this is looking pretty crispy. Look at that. That wasn't very hard at all. Okay. First try. I was, like, worried I was going to embarrass myself, but I guess we're good. All right, cool. Thick, you'll love to see it. Okay. Yes! <laughs> yes! Thread front to back, yes. Okay, thank you, Tissa. I, I, I wasn't sure about that. Um, my biggest irrational fear is accidentally sewing my hand to something by accident. Okay, legit? Legit? I worry about that too. Shit! Like that's actually something I, I like thought about going into this. I'm like, what happens if I stab myself and I sew fabric into myself? But like, honestly, I feel like your hands stay very clear of the actual sewing area. I think, it, it, and you do mention it's an irrational fear, but like, I get that. I totally worry about stupid stuff like that. Um, 
Chandler played she. Hey, uh, Chandler, I actually didn't hear the sound alert. Did it play, or is my audio fucked up? Let me know. Um, if you step on the pedal slowly, the needle won't go too fast, yeah. Yeah, I think it's hard. Yeah, see? It's hard. You heard it? Okay. Shit. She! I'm, I guess I'm just not hearing my sound alerts. Oh, you know what? Actually, I know exactly what I'm not hearing them. I know exactly what I'm hearing them. I probably have the same mon- I have the wrong audio monitoring device set. Ah, that's probably right. Maybe I fixed it. <laughs> it's like driving, even though I don't know how to drive yet. Oh no! Um, it probably is like driving. See, I I know how to drive, but I don't know how to sew. So Don, between the two of us, we can sew and drive at the same time. I think it's easier to stab your finger with hand sewing. Yeah, I think it is. Driving is way more scary. That is true. Actually, driving has far greater risks associated with it, for sure, for sure. Um, all right, I'm gonna pop back into this video and I'm gonna see, I'm gonna keep us going. I'm gonna keep us going with this. We'll go big mode on the video. So there's one last I should probably stop my mu music. Okay. You know, I'm actually gonna turn up my, my monitor a little bit because she's real quiet for me. Thing we need to do there we go. We sew on the machine. Last thing we need to do. Thread, hold on to the upper thread. And turn the handle towards you. Wait, fuck, what are we doing? There's one last thing we need to do before we sew on the machine. To draw up the bobbin thread. Okay. Hold on to the upper thread. Okay. And turn the handle towards you. And make sure you lightly pull up on the upper thread tail. Lightly pull up on the upper. This way you'll be able to pull up a loop of the bobbin thread. Pull up a loop of the bobbin thread. Oh, I think I feel it. Place the threads under the presser foot towards the back of the machine. They do it? Wait. Close the door. And okay, so I pulled up. Wait. Oh, wait, shit. I think I did. Oh, that's so cool. The needle. Yeah, look. That's awesome. So the, um, the hand wheel, it pulled up the lower thread through the, um, through the, like, sewing area. Okay. Cool, I think I got it. All right, so I have two threads now. I'm not sure what to do with them. Um, yesterday, underestimate my atrocious hand-eye coordination. <laughs> yeah, stop driving. It's pretty good. Have to drive at least an hour every day with commuting. I know Chandler has to drive so much. It sucks. And they don't even give her per diem um, through the needle plate. Is that what they call it, the needle plate? All right, cool. All right, so I've got my lower thread through the needle plate now. Let me see what she where she says I need to take it. Whoop. Got a little ahead of myself. Under the presser foot towards the back of the machine. Okay, so I bring it. Pull onto that loop. And your needle is threaded. To draw up the bobbin you and make sure you lightly pull a loop of the bobbin thread. Yeah, okay. Now what do I do with it? The threads under the presser foot towards the back of the machine. Oh, okay. So they both go under the presser foot towards Close the back the of the machine. Okay. Okay. And I can do that. Removable storage compartment back on. Okay. Out the back of the machine. Now we're ready to test sew a stitch. Oh, we're ready to test sew a stitch. Shut up. Okay, so we put our accessory box. Oh, she said close the door. Put the accessory box back on the thing. Okay. There we go, look, we have our threads out the back. Yeah, we have one on top, one on the bottom. Okay, okay, that's that wasn't so hard. That wasn't very hard at all. Um, okay, <laughs> there it is. Mike is here and he has redeemed the egg. So, all right, I have to do it. I have no choice, I gotta do it. Let me go ahead, I'll put some, I'll throw some tunes on. Um. And I'll go make an egg. <laughs> Alright, I'll catch you guys in just a sec.
Okay. Alrighty. We let's go ahead and put 12 minutes on the clock. All right, sick. Okay, so. Uh, no sewing, only egg. Uh, yay, ready to go. Yes, yes, we're ready to go. I'm excited. Stream intermission egg time for sure. It's like his machine blend with his curtain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? I, so what I actually do like about this setup is that, um, if you've watched any of my other streams, I put my green screen directly behind me. And in order to get in and out of my, like, enclosure, I have to go under the green screen. But this way, where, where I'm set up right now, I can just walk. I don't have to climb under the green screen. I could just walk off to the side, uh, which is very nice. I really, really appreciate that. Oh, didn't mean to bump the mic. Okay. I'm, like, nervous. I'm nervous to start. The next step is to actually do a stitch. Like... <laughs> it's kind of exciting. So, um, I guess we should just go ahead and get started, right? So, okay. I'll go ahead and, uh, I'll cut our music. And let's get back to the video. Let's see what's next. Before we do a test stitch out on our machine, Make sure the machine is selected for a straight stitch. If it's not, turn your stitch selector dial. A straight stitch. So that the straight stitch icon is in line with the gray dot above. Uh, Make sure your stitch length dial is set between wait. two and three. <laughs> Crap. Which is a standard length for a straight stitch. Wait, wait, wait. Which one? Dial is in line with the gray dot above. Make sure your stitch length. What? Wait. Shut up. Is it this one? I guess it must be. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Okay, we're good. Is in line with the gray dot above. Make sure your stitch length dial is set between two and three. Two and three. Which is okay. a standard length for a straight stitch. Uh. And make sure your stitch width dial is set to zero. Stitch width set to zero. Okay, cool. Easy. Now place your test piece of fabric under oh, the stop. foot. Stop, 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 I can't. All right, are we really, are we really doing this? Are we doing this? Okay. Okay, okay. Okay. All right, hold on. Um. Oh my gosh, Theodore, thank you for following. I really appreciate it. Um. I was planning on staying for the whole stream, but uh, then I realized it was half three in the morning. Oh no, so I'm just gonna leave a follow and I'll be back soon. Oh my gosh, Theodore, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for stopping by. And um, hey, if, if you wanna hang out again, um, yeah, I'll check my schedule. I stream other times during the week. I'll be streaming next on Tuesday. And if you would like, you are welcome to join our Discord. There's a link right there. So thank you so much for hanging out with me uh, you know, for as long as you did. And half three in the morning, go get some sleep. What's wrong with you? Come on. Uh, I hope you rest well. Uh, <laughs> Allison, I was thinking the same thing. Where's the gay stitch? Come on, are you for real? Um, and then... <laughs> let's see. Your chat has disappeared from the stream, apparently. Has it? Has it? Oh, that's weird. Why'd that happen? Huh. I literally don't know what to make of that. <laughs> Let me try refreshing it. What? Oh, I know what happened. Whoopsie doodle. How did that happen? It was hiding. See? <laughs> it's hiding behind the video panel. I must have uh, clicked and dragged it on accident. Let me go ahead and lock that into place. <laughs> OBS is silencing you for it fears what you might say. <laughs> okay. All right. I, uh, I think I'm ready. Let me go ahead and let me sort of give myself some space here. Right. Okay. And let me... 
Should I cut off a piece of test fabric or should I just do it right on the main? Just do it right on the main thing. Because this is this is what I got. Now that I'm looking at it, it's actually quite a bit less than I thought. Um Oh, it looks hey, it looks like I already did a little test strip. It looks like I already took a bite out of it. So I guess I could just cut off a little bit more from here. Um Yeah, why don't we try that? Why don't we try just chopping off a little bit more? And that could be our test strip. You say test? Okay. Alright. Yeah, Tess, I think you're basically like our expert here. Oh, there's a music back on. Um, you can use a sheet of paper to test a stitch. Yo, Nick! Coming in with the, the sewing knowledge. I didn't know you knew about sewing, bud. Um... I do have paper, actually. I'll I'll use the fabric. I'll try to be more authentic about it. You know what I mean? Okay. Need a little bit of room to actually cut. Okay. Ooh, this test strip's looking good. Yes. Can we get some test strip hype? Let's go. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, sir. It's looking mint. I can't wait till I have a stitch in this. It's going to be great. I'm so excited. Um, yes, I'm here with the complete amateur opinions. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, Tess has been researching for more years, so you know more terms. Okay. Sick. See, this is the kind of experience I need. This is the kind of experience I need to help me out. Okay. Right? Yeah. This is looking good. This is looking good. All right, let's go back to the video. Uh, hold up real quick. <laughs> okay. Um, let's go Bing mode on this. There we go. And let's send it. Full send. Oh, wait. Real quick. Let me just crank this up a little bit. Lower the presser foot and press your foot control to begin sewing. That's it? When you're done sewing, turn the hand wheel Press your piece of fabric under the presser foot. Lower the presser foot and press your foot control to begin sewing. No way. No way. It's as simple as that. Okay. I guess let's let's give it a try. Here, I'll put her on like slow motion. I'll put her on like a uh, half speed and I'll follow along. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing it! We're doing it! Look at it go! When you're done sewing, <laughs> turn the hand wheel towards you. Oh, I like so that the needle is in the highest position. I like this energy. And about to make its descent downward. Okay, it's in the highest position and about to make its descent downward. Okay, and I think there. I think it's about to make its descent downward. Raise the presser foot. Raise the presser foot. And remove your work. Remove my work. This is my and work. It looks good on the top. And Ooh, it looks... Wait. And then I cut it, right? That's what she said. You just go snip. And let's see. Let's see. Here's our stitch. This is our stitch. It actually, yeah, it looks pretty good. I don't think I can get a super good, super good shot on it with this light. Um, yeah. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Actually, it looks pretty fucking shitty on the back. Yeah, it doesn't look amazing on the back, does it? 
Yeah, here, let me see. Let me get y'all a light on this real quick. So you can see kind of what I'm working with here. See, see how it's like loopy loops on the back? I don't know what's up with that. This is the back of the stitch. It's like a bunch of like loose loops with one thread going through the middle. And then the front looks okay. See, like the front looks okay. This is the top. But then the back is like, bleh. It looks gross. So Don says the tension is loose. What is that? So what does that mean? The tension is loose. How can I make the tension not loose? I guess is kind of where I'm at. Um, yeah, that's something wrong with the bobbin thread. Oh, but I tried so hard with the bobbin. Oh, no. That's so sad. I got to fix my bobbin. What do you mean my bobbin's busted? That's so sad. Um, all right. All right. We're going to have to do some, some troubleshooting here. We're going to have to go off script a little bit. Okay. All right. So, my bobbin is busted. I've got a case of the busted bobbin is what I'm getting out of this. Let's see if we can fix this. So my bobbin's down here, right? So, let's... <laughs> More like bob out, got him. <laughs> All right, let's see, let's see. So we've got... Got our bobbin in here, and it is kind of loose, right? Like it just falls out, which I don't think is right. I think it was supposed to click into place, which it, I guess, it didn't, which is probably why it's kind of loose, right? So we were supposed to put it in. I think I put it in wrong. So let's try. So we put the bobbin, bob in, bob out, yeah. And then it's supposed to be coming out of this. Does the tutorial have a troubleshooting section? Actually, it might. Let's see. Let's see what our tutorial says. Well, first, actually... Oh! My timer's going off. Oh, shit, it's egg time! Okay, alright, fuck yeah. Let's go. Alright, alright. Shh, shush. Um, okay, I'll leave you guys with some music, and I will be right back. Egg time, baby! Let's go! Let's go! Yes, we will have egg time! Billy, you better not cause trouble in there, okay?
we're good. We're good. <laughs> Not excellent. I'm sorry. I just can't. I can't. Look at this. This is grizzly. I can't. I can't. For my own health, I have stuff to do tomorrow, okay? I can't. I can't fuck around with having salmonella absolutely not absolutely not um okay all right so tissa you've been very helpful you've been giving me uh guides here and i will look at it so all right let's cut the music let's cut the the mat on over here um oh that's not right that's a red circle emoji there we go there's our video all right, how to wind bobbin and thread a genome sewing machine. Okay. All right, yeah, sure, we can watch this. Hey everyone, in this video, I am going to be showing you how to wind the bobbin and thread your Genomi HD sewing machine. Uh, this right here is a Genomi HD 1000. Um, I did a review video on this uh, specific machine, and I will put the link in the description below. But let's oh, 414. Go okay. Start. All right. All right. Gotcha. 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 Um, come over here this way of the thread, and then you siphon this through the needle. Okay. Yeah. And there you go. And then that's done. The top's done. So then you take this off, open that up. Here's your, your bobbin holder. Yeah, there's my bobbin holder. You place the thread. It, this is always a trick, right? You do the thread like a P. See how the it's like a P? Oh, wait, 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 wait. shut up. So it's like a P. Okay, that makes sense to me. Wait, okay, I get this. You place the thread. It, this is always a trick, right? You do the thread like a P. See how the it's like a P? It's like a P. So make sure your thread's hanging out like a P. Like a P. You place it into the bobbin holder, like this. Into the bobbin holder. You take it, you put it through here. Put it through here. And then you put it through there. Put it through there. Now, I always make sure that the thread's hanging out this way. Yeah. Not this way. Not that way. It's always hanging out this way. This way. And then you put it right in here. Right in there. And then you snap it in. Snap it in. And oh. then I hold this piece, the top part off, up a little bit. And Wait, I you wind, hold, what piece? hold this piece, the top part off, up a little bit. And I wind that down. And sometimes you got to do it a couple times for it to hook. But see, it got, got it there. And then you pull this string up. Now you can take your scissors because there's a little hoop right here. And you just pull it out. Now your machine's threaded. You're good to go. You just close that up. Okay. Now you're ready to sew. And you know what? I just want to say, too, I absolutely love this machine. Um, I it, it literally... Okay. I, I feel like that's what I did last time. I feel like that's what I did last time. The top thread. Yeah. I think I think this is right. Let's take another shot at it. Let's take another shot at it. Let's see if this works for us, okay? Test again? Yeah, let's test again. But oh, you know what? My cat wants to come in. Let me let her in. Come here, baby. Come here, Willow. My cat Willow is here. She might hang out with us if she would like. I love her. <laughs> I love her so much. Um, yeah, let's throw some, some tunes on. Okay. Alrighty. Maya just left. Maybe that's why Willow wants to be here. Because then she's not competing with another cat. Willow doesn't like that I change stuff up on her. She actually looks, she looks upset with me. She's like, why did you move the tripod and the lights and everything? I'm like, sorry, kitty, I don't make the rules. Okay. So, we just put our thread in here. Lower the pressure foot. I did not need to lower it so aggressively, but whatever. And then just full send, right? Let's go nice and slow with it.
Yeah, it's slow and steady. Slow and steady. So let's see. Right now, looking good. Uh, still not looking great on the back. It's still not looking great if I'm being totally honest right now. Not to be negative about it, but it's not looking amazing. That sounds like a cat, yeah. Yeah, right? Not liking any changes in, in scenery or setup. That's how Cats is. But that's okay. I tried to keep things steady enough for her liking. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know about this one, you guys. Still not looking great. I realize I was on small cam that whole time, but... Still very m Ooh, uh oh Well... <laughs> Dang, I'm a mess, y'all. I'm a mess! All my wires are getting tangled. When you get a machine, usually it's user error, 99% of the time and not the actual machine. Yeah, I figured. Maybe, I, I mean, I I assume it's not the machine. Um, Is the cloth particularly thin? Not really. It's not like particularly, particularly thin, so. Brought my light out to try and, I feel like it's too bright. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez, I don't know about that. That's like normal thinness for cloth, I feel like. Right, like... I know, right? <laughs> Thank you. Too bright, yeah, I know, I'm sorry. Um... <sighs> like, I assume it's user error. Tension, which one was the tension? This is the tension one. But the lady in the video seemed pretty sure about leaving it at zero. She was like, yeah, just leave it at zero. And I'm like, okay, whatever you say. Um, I don't know. I feel like, let me see if the singer video does have a troubleshooting section. It might have a specific answer for this. So, yeah, let's go ahead. Let's see if they have anything to say. You will feel and hear it click into place. Now hold on to the slash. Let's see, selecting a stitch. And insert it. Making a buttonhole. And you will feel it Changing the needle. Maybe at the end of the selecting a stitch section. To sew the honeycomb stitch, when you've reached the end of the fabric, I'm going to come up to the stitch. Lower position, about to descend downward. No. So what? So how do I know which one I'm going to sew? And remove the fabric. And here's our scene. Dang, hers Continue looks so good. The beginning and end of the scene. Secure the thread so that it doesn't become unraveled. Now let's take a look at some of our other stitches. Hers looks so good. I'm going to cut to the end. I don't know, y'all. Try putting it at three or four. Um, that's this dial, right? This one is what the stitch width. I want to say. You know what? Let's just max this bitch out, right? Let's just max it out. See what happens. Let's put all the dials at four. What's the worst that could happen? Um. Yeah, wait, so, um, which dial do you want me to put at three or four? This is the tension disc, I think. 
This is the stitch width, I think? This is the stitch type. That one I know. Tension? I forget which one tension is. Let's see, can I, can I get just like a little, little picture guide? Here? Yeah, there we go. Which one is the tension? I guess you can say I did not pay attention. All right, here we go. Here we go. Okay, so it is It is this one up top. This is the tension dial. Okay. And then... All right, cool. Realize I had the wrong tab open. Um, you did not pay attention. Yeah. Oh, Toasty is here. Thank you. Okay, Don says top one is tension. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll put stitch width back between two and three. We'll put tension to four. And let's just full send this, right? Like literally, what's the worst that can happen? Right? Okay. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Let's go. Ooh, do you guys feel the tension? straight stitch <gasps> look at that straight stitch it's perfect we did it <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> my first stitch has already come undone that weak ass first stitch didn't even know what we were doing but with one simple trick, we got a torque. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your help, Tessa. I appreciate it. Um, the tension can cause problems like that. And thank you too, Don. I appreciate it. I need my sewing experts here because otherwise I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Well, hey. Let's, let's learn how to do another stitch, right? Let's see what else this video's got for us. I'll, I'll cut this right now. Okay, back to this. Okay. And remove your work. Yeah. Yeah, I just did and that. Stitch. It looks good on the top. And it looks good on the back. So it means our machine is threaded properly. If the stitches look good on top, but have loops on the bottom oh oh that's or these little wavy zigzags. okay she's literally talking about the thread isn't threaded properly rethread your machine and do another test sew oh that actually now maybe so is seen the machine is already set for a straight stitch i notice on the needle plate there are some lines while the needle is in center position the line closest to the presser foot is three eighths of an inch. The second line to the right is one half inch. And the third line over is five eighths of an inch. Okay. A lot of commercial patterns I work with use five eighths inch seam allowance. So I'm going to follow the third line. Okay. Place the fabric under the presser foot so that the edge of the seam lines up with your guideline. Do I have enough room on this? And uh... the presser foot. Press the foot control and sew forward a few stitches. Press and hold the reverse lever. 
And so backwards. Okay, so I am. I am three fourths from the uh, or three lines from the left, right? Um, which I think she said is five eighths inch or something, some amount of it. The the standard allowance for commercial patterns. Um, but huh. She said the top of my thing wasn't threaded properly, huh? So I'm still thinking about that. The lady was wrong about zero tension. Um, so she said that if you have looping or stitching errors, it could be that your top thread is not threaded properly. So I'm wondering about that. It, it, it is very possible. It is very possible that I, uh, I'm fine. Well, here, I, I'll just show you. Right, take a look at the top of my machine here. Oops. Oops. Is it possible that there's something there? Because one thing that I'm not sure if it's a problem or not, you could see how this part of the thread hangs loosely, right? Is that a problem? Does it have to be, should it be taut? Right, like should it, I, I guess, I don't know. I don't know if that's a problem or not. Well, now it's definitely loose, whoops. And then from here, it goes into this one right here. And then it goes up through the top. And then it comes down. And yeah, it, it does come up. I don't know, is it supposed to be? I guess it was just tension that did fix it. I definitely threaded it right. We'll keep going with it. I don't know, she's out here saying I threaded everything wrong, and like, it's got me worried, you know what I mean? But yeah, we'll keep going with it. That's probably good. Okay. Alright, let's, let's keep going with the video then. All right, so she is going to want me to do a forward and then a reverse. So I think I could do that. A few stitches. Release stitches. Press and hold. Press and hold the reverse lever. And sew backwards a few stitches. All right, sew backwards a few stitches. Release the reverse lever and sew along your seam. Oh, I'm stupid. Okay, so I super did, uh, in doing my little demonstration there, I, ex I for sure did unthread my top thread. So let me redo this real quick. Let me redo the top thread. Fortunately, the top thread is actually very easy to uh, thread. I feel like the bottom thread is a bit of a pain in the butt. But this one's not so bad. The tricky part is getting it through the needle head, though. I will admit that's a little tricky, but I don't think that should be too much of a problem. Remember, I got it on my first try last time. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, no. I almost got it. Come on. I'm like sweating now. I'm like. I really wanted to impress you guys with how good I am at threading the needle. See, if only I had the auto threader. Oh no. Oh no. I'm like really embarrassed now. Here, I'll put some music on. Makes That always makes me feel better. Um, oh, I didn't go big cam. Whoops, thank you. Uh, yeah, bobbin is the most pain. Yours is front load bobbin. They have top load bobbins to where you can see your bobbin thread and how much you've got left and it's okay. What? That's so cool. That's very cool. Um, best track, yes. 
Yo, Maddie, you know. You know. If you know, you know. I don't know, actually. There's some real good tracks. There's some real good ones. I have them. I have plenty of, uh, plenty of this music in my playlist. Okay, there we go. See? Look at that. Look at that. All I needed was the power of music to help me out. And as we talked about, you do... Oh, no, did I do it wrong? It's, like, all tangled now. Yeah, yeah. I looped it into itself. I don't think I want to do that. Alright, and like we talked about, you do thread the needle front to back, which I did, so that's good. Okay. Alrighty. Um, actually, I don't think this is alright. Actually, I do not think this is alright. It's wrapped around the needle. Let's try this one more time. There we go. Okay. And almost Bazinga. There it is. We did it. We did it. Easy. Easy peasy. Uh, sometimes music is all you need to make it happen. Yes, exactly. Um, black cats are hard to photograph because they are both dark and capable of moving. Black cats are like trying to photograph uh, Bigfoot, for sure. Um, the lighting in here is not good right now. The part that moves your fabric that looks like teeth is the needle plate area. Are called the feed dogs? They're called dogs. <laughs> Earned a Sims skill point for sewing. Let's go. Let's go. Um, oh gosh, I feel like what in in the herbs there's um. I feel like this would fall under creativity or maybe I think crafting was one of them. For sure, yeah. I, I think I've definitely earned a skill point from this today, if I'm being honest. Especially since, like, your first, like, four skill points are dummy easy to earn. Um, alrighty, so let's keep going. Yeah, let's keep this bad boy going. Um, I think I'm just gonna leave my music playing while she talks. If it's too loud, let me know, but I think it should be okay. Notice I'm not pushing or pulling the fabric. I'm just guiding it along my nibble on your seam. Stitches. Okay, so she's trying to teach me about the reverse button, Press and I keep control, messing it up. Press and hold the reverse lever, and sew backwards a few stitches. Release the reverse lever. Three. And sew along your seam. Notice, I'm not pushing or pulling the fabric. I'm just guiding it along my guideline. Stop at the end of the fabric. Press and hold the reverse lever and sew backwards a few stitches. Release the reverse lever and sew to the end. Turn the hand wheel so the needle is in the highest position and is about to make its descent downward. Raise the presser foot and remove the fabric. And here's our seam. The reverse stitching at the beginning and end of the seam secure the thread so that it doesn't become unraveled. Oh, that's now cool. Let's some of our other stitches. That's very cool. Select another stitch on the machine. Okay. Um, okay, so what happened there was, if you're able to hear her explanation, the video is kind of quiet, I apologize for that. Um, she had me sew forward and then in reverse, like a lock stitch, is that what they call it? Um, 
so she had me so forward, backwards, and then forwards again, right? This is not working. <laughs> I gotta get this lighting situation figured out. Um, and I guess basically what it does is it gives you a cleaner stitch where you reverse over it. Because yeah, you can see here, we basically sewed over the same section three times, right? And then in the middle, it's a lot lighter, right? It's a, a thinner stitch. And it looks good on the back too, for the most part. Yeah, towards the front here, it looks like it piled up a little bit. I'm not totally sure why that happened. I think maybe I was a little too fast or a little too slow with it. Uh, I think I was tugging at the fabric at that point, but I think I get it. I think this is working pretty well. Not exactly, but it secures the seam so it doesn't get undone easily. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like how, like, for some of my earlier stitches, they were done so poorly, they're, like, already starting to come undone. Like, you can see here, this one's already starting to come undone. So doing a stitch like that keeps it from getting undone. All right, cool. That's very cool. I love that. All right, so... Let's see what else she's got for us. Willow, what's wrong? Where are you? Oh, you're out there. Hey, baby. Willow says hello. Yes, baby. All right, let's try to at least get past this section. And then I think we'll get up to the making a buttonhole section and then we'll call it a night. I'm going to come to the stitch selector dial and I want to do a multi-step zigzag stitch. So I'm going to move the dial until it clicks into place on this grouping of stitches that contains a multi-step zigzag stitch. Okay. But I see three colors. I see gray, blue, and red. So how do I know which one I'm going to sew? If I come up to the stitch length dial, I see that my numbers are in gray. So if the gray numbers line up with the gray dot above, then I'm going to sew a gray stitch. Okay, I was actually wondering about that. If I sew the blue honeycomb stitch, I'm going to turn my stitch length dial so that it clicks on the blue yeah. S1. Okay. If I want to sew the red feather looking stitch, I'm going to turn my stitch length dial and click it into place on the red S2. S2, okay. But I want to sew a gray multi-step zigzag so I'm going to turn the stitch length dial back to where we had it between two and three. Got it, okay. Because these are decorative stitches, there needs to be width involved. So I'm going to come up to the stitch width dial. I don't have that. And I'm going to move it all the way up to five. I absolutely do not have that. Wait, now wait, 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 shut up. Looks like. Hold on, everyone, everyone shut up real quick. Look at her, look at her tension. Her tension is set to four. I swear at the beginning she told me to set it to zero, but she has it set to four. That's what it needed to be at. We were right all along. Okay, all right, cool. I feel very vindicated right now. So we did need to have a, our, our tension set to four. I, as you can see, do not have a stitch width dial, <laughs> right? Told you. See, Tessa, I should just listen to you from the very beginning. You, you know that you could do the tutorial. You can give me the lesson here. <laughs> All right, I appreciate it, thank you. Um, so I don't have a stitch width, I'll just, I guess, skip that, leave it at the default. Um, you know, let's, let's keep it going. I just feel so vindicated right now. Now let's see what that looks like. Yes. Place the fabric under the presser foot. Uh, I think Lower I might foot. need a, no, you know, I have a little bit of room begin left. Sewing. Turn the hand wheel towards you so that the needle is in the highest position, about to descend downward. Raise the presser foot. Okay. Okay, until the presser foot's about to go downward and then snip. And yeah, look at that. That's super cool. 
Okay. Yeah, so if we, if you look at it, we've got right here in the middle, you could maybe see it. We have a zigzag stitch right there in the middle. It's real hard to see. Yeah, see right, right here? It's doing a zigzag. So like she said, this is just a decorative stitch, right? But it does look very cool. And I think the idea of using a stitch in a decorative way is actually really cool. I hadn't really thought about that or thought that that considered that that was something you could do. Um, you can see on the back, it actually, it looks pretty nice too. It's not looping or coming undone or anything. It's actually working, which is awesome because before it wasn't. So I was a little quick and sloppy with it, but that's cool. So that's how I select different stitches. Um, <laughs> conspiracy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is. I, I swear the, the video is just a conspiracy to make me look like a, a fool in front of everybody. Except I don't need any help looking like a fool. Okay. All right. Let's see if she's got anything else for us in this section. Remove the fabric and trim the thread. And there's our multi-step zigzag Yeah, stitch. that's what mine looked like. Awesome. Now I, I want to sew this blue honeycomb stitch. Yeah, let's do the blue honeycomb stitch. The stitch grouping is already selected on my stitch selector dial. It is already selected, you're right. I'm going to come up to the stitch length dial and move it so that the blue S1 is selected. Okay, blue S1. The stitch width dial is already set to number five. I don't have the stitch width dial. Hey, to sew the honeycomb please stitch, stop asking. Place the fabric under the presser foot. All right, can I get one more stitch out of this? And begin sewing. Yeah, I think I can. Right, whoa, slow down there, partner. I'm still working on it. I'm still working on it. Okay. All right, so I just got to skew it right in. Okay, looking good, looking good. And then we're going to put our presser foot down here. And then I think now we just, we just full send. Let's go. When you've reached the end of the fabric, turn the hand wheel towards you so that the needle is in the highest position about to descend downward. Raise the presser foot. Remove the fabric from under the presser foot and trim the threads. And there's our honeycomb stitch. Lastly, I want to sew the red feather stitch. All right, I think I think this is looking good. I think this is looking real good. Let's see. Um, probably more helpful to pra practice with contrasting thread slash fabric. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, no, it's not. It's more of a good stitch to use for seams that need to be more secure, like on pants. Oh, so it's not just aesthetic. Okay, cool. Um... And then, yeah, use contrasting threads to practice. Okay. All right. I'll keep that in mind. Um, so here is my... Oh, that's cool. This is very cool. So, yeah, you know, co contrasting threads would show up better on camera as well, but we're doing our best here. So, yeah, check it out. Scope my honeycomb stitch. Looks pretty good, huh? Isn't that such a cute pattern? Now, you probably saw that the machine was taking a longer time to sew this stitch because it's more complicated. But isn't it so cool that a machine could just bust that out? If you wanted to sew that by hand, it would take like way longer. That's awesome. And it looks decent on the back as well. It's a really cute pattern. I love it. This is awesome. Okay. All right. I think we're almost done. Let's see what else she's got for me. Bitch. 
The stitch grouping is already selected on my stitch selector dial. Are we doing the last one? I'm going to come up to the stitch length dial and turn it so that the red S2 is selected. Yeah. And the stitch width dial is already set to number five. Oh now boy. to sew the feather stitch, place the fabric under the presser foot. We are running out of room on Lower this piece of fabric, foot. but I think this is our and last one. Sewing. So we'll just do our best with it. We're just gonna get real wild and sloppy with this one, everyone. We're just gonna full send real wild and sloppy with it. Cause you know what? There's no rules. We're learning right now. We can do whatever we want. There's no fucking rules. Our feather so stitch is going to be the most unrestrained fabric. feather stitch you've ever seen in your life. Turn the hand wheel towards you so the needle is not. Let's fucking go. Full send on this. Pedal to the metal, baby. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. 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 Raise the needle until it's ready to descend. Pull it off and then snip the thread. Ooh, y'all, that looks bussin. That's looking real nice, actually. Maybe I need to bring this kind of energy more often, right? Look at this. This is my feather stitch. See? This one right on the, the right here. This is the feather stitch. It looks kind of like a vine, right? You can see it really good right here in the blue section. But yeah, it looks like a, like ivy or something. That's so cool. And it feels good and tight. It feels like a good, strong stitch. And then on the back, it looks great. This actually might be the best one so far. This looks fantastic. Yeah, this is bussin' respectfully. On oh God, on oh God, I love this. Okay, all right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Do we have any more? What do you got for me, singer lady? The highest position, about to descend downward. Raise the presser foot. Remove the fabric from under the presser foot. And trim the threads. And there's our feather stitch. Yeah, that's what mine looks like. Now let's make a buttonhole. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. I did it. Okay. All right, time. Time. Speed run, speed run time. What's my time? Two and a half hours? Good. Did it. We did it. We'll, uh, we won't make a buttonhole because, yeah, I'm definitely going to fuck that up. And then changing the needle. Oh, it's fine. I don't need to change the needle. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's, that's going to be it for us. That's going to be it for us for, for tonight. Um, here, let's just close this out. Let's just close this out because, um, Ooh, whoa. hello, hello, hello. Can I transform you real quick? Why are you upside down? Whoop, that's not right. <laughs> that's not right. We're struggling. Don't mind me, don't mind me, I'm just doing my best right now. <laughs> um, there we go, hey, hey, all right, okay. We're good, we're good. We're gonna close things out for the night, though. We're gonna close things out for the night. Okay, let's get some, let's get some, some music going. Yeah, that'll do, that'll do us. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Your machine green screen. Yeah, I sold the chroma key set, so um, it would, it would, but um, that machine was dark green for a second. I know, I know, it's crazy. All because of you it happened. Yes, Tessa, oh my gosh. I would not have found 
success today like I did if you weren't here. Thank you so much for your help. I super, super appreciate it. Um, what's this song? Allison, I feel like you know what this song is. This is from Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door, baby. Let's go. The best RPG uh, to ever be made. For sure, for sure. You know it. You know it. Um, so, yeah. I don't know about you guys, but... Uh, I don't know if you're being like sarcastic or whatever, but this is actually Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. It is the song from Rogueport, specifically. Uh, it might be familiar to you because I use this song in in D and D all the time. You you've played in a few of my games, and I use this song like all the fucking time because I love it. Uh, so I don't know that that might have something to do with it. I'm not sure, but um, oh yeah, okay, yeah, it's a great game. I recommend it. But yeah, so while we wind down for the night. Um, I just want to say thank you guys all for being here for my first ever Learning with Abby stream. Thank you so much. I had a lot of fun, and honestly, I think it went really well. Um, I get, you know, tonight we learned how to wind a bobbin, we learned how to thread the machine, we learned how to do a stitch, we learned how to do different kinds of stitches, we learned how to troubleshoot, we learned that you do need to set the tension to four, um... So, it might not seem like much, right? But this is how the learning process goes. It's not something that you just do instantly, or you do once and then you're done. It's a continuing thing. And today I learned how to wind a bobbin, but like, maybe, you know, during our next stream I'll learn how to sew a pillow. And after that I'll learn how to make a shirt, you know? Like, it's one thing and then the next thing and the next thing. And, um, you know, it's slow, but that's okay. And I super appreciate you guys coming along on the journey with me. So, um, <laughs> I have happy, joyful tears because of this. Oh my gosh, that's so sweet. Thank you, Tissa. Hey, <laughs> slow and steady. That's right. That's right. So, um, yeah, I'll be doing this not next Monday, but the Monday after that. So what does that put us at? Probably like the 28th, 25th, 25th of October. We'll be doing this again. So, um, yeah. Definitely I want to do this again. And next time I want to actually make, I want to try and make something. I think I'm going to go for a pillow or a drawstring mat. And I think it'll be really exciting. But yeah, so for now we're going to be closing down for the night. Um, for those of you who are new, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, I stream generally three days a week, right? Tuesdays I do speedrunning, Fridays I do Minecraft, and then on Saturdays I do a mystery. I just do whatever I want. Um, I think... I might start using my Saturday stream to play some old Flash games. So stay tuned for that. And then every other Monday, I do learning streams. This is the first one. And then the next one, we're gonna keep on going with sewing. Um, that's a nice picture, what, the one behind me? Yeah. Yeah, huh, what could that be? What could that be? Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Is it signed by none other than Andrew Hussey himself? My camera cable is not long enough to go any closer, but yeah, it sure is. <laughs> you saw Jade? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who do we got? Who do we got in this pick? We got Jade, we have Rose, we have Kanaya, uh, John, Carcat, Roxy. Yeah, I think we got Nepta up there. We got we got everybody. We got the whole gang, for sure. Um The May Oh my god, how could I forget the mayor? Everyone's favorite character for sure. <laughs> Um, sounds like fun. I was never good at making a stream schedule. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's tough. Um, I've been making my schedules a month at a time, right? Uh, fortunately, I have very schedule, very stable, like, employment. My schedule is usually pretty normal. Um, honestly, it's easy to start with, like, one day, right? And then if you can manage one day a week, do two. And if you can manage two a week, do three. Man, it's more than three a week. Godspeed to you. Holy shit. <laughs> like, that's too much. Um, but yeah, I mean, whatever schedule you can make work. If monthly is too overwhelming, uh, weekly is really good too. I think weekly works for a really good schedule. And I know a lot of streamers that do it uh, week to week. Um, so yeah, whatever you can sort of... Whatever you can make work. Um... Let's see. Okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and close it up. Uh, yeah, like I said, if 
Yeah, good job being employed. I know, I know. Not to flex or whatever, but you know. Um, but yeah, so that's the schedule. Tuesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, and alternating Mondays. That's when you can catch me. Otherwise, if you would like, you can hang out in my Discord. The link is right there. Um, you can see pictures of my cat there, and I talk about, I don't know, beans or whatever. Talk about random shit. Or don't, you don't have to join. I'm not gonna pressure you. Anyway, let's start our raid. We're gonna do a raid tonight. Um, I would love it if you would participate. There are 300 channel points in it for you if you do. Uh, and we will be raiding... Yeah, let's go with um, Jocelyn Martello. Um, she is a variety streamer. Um, I know her for playing my hardcore Minecraft. She is very knowledgeable about Minecraft. She is very good at it. Um, right now, she is doing a just chatting stream. It looks like she is, I guess, watching Hell's Kitchen? Sure, why not? Why not? It looks like she's having a good time. So... I would love it if you guys headed on over and brought the hype. Um, if you like what she's doing, feel free to give her a follow. Um, but otherwise, I had a lot of fun, and I hope you guys have a really good night. Um, the egg is fucking raw. I'm so... Mike, look. Mike, I'm so sorry about the egg. Before we close out here, I'm really sorry about the egg. This thing looks nasty. This thing looks that You won today, Michael, okay? <laughs> you're, you're the big winner. Um, so... Yeah, this is bad. This is bad. You'll get me next time. Next time I'll cook the egg properly, okay? Okay? And I'll, I'll hold you to that. Now you have even more channel points to, to make me eat eggs, which is horrifying. Um, so, alrighty. We're ready to go. I'll catch you guys later. Have a good night.